Welcome back to the HGC North America. We are going to game number five between Team Freedom and Gale Force Esports. Let's see where that battleground will be. Gale Force Esports lost the last game on Warhead Junction. So in keeping with current trends, probably is picking first pick. And that gives the map choice to Team Freedom. And if Freedom is going to select, is it Sky or is it Infernal or is it Dragon? In fact, they are going to go to Infernal Shrines. Uh, you know, I talked about why I would prefer that over the other two maps, so I like that that was going to be the selection here for them. Uh, my main thing would be just, please don't Artanis. That is the last thing I want to see on Infernal Shrines. I, I, we've seen it a couple of times, just so lackluster. Uh, so that's the only thing there. Uh, when it comes to the draft that I'm really concerned about. Yeah, it is a good battleground choice. <laughs> 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 I had flashbacks to Zarya's <laughs> cannons for a second, yeah. or gr grenades. It is a good battleground for the rest of the comfort picks, though, for uh, Team Freedom. As for Gale Force Esports, they have to know that they're going to be going somewhere that works out a lot better for the type of playstyle that Team Freedom wants to be going for, more of a team fight centered. Um, so likely they're not going to find as much success with all of their globals. What do you think that they're looking to get? I guess Kerrigan more I mean, than anything? Always got to be the Kerrigan, right? Uh, which. I mean, Freedom's got to understand as well, so they're going to be able to remove it. And as first pick for Gale Force Esports, uh, that's going to be able to force the ban. So Gale Force should be looking to be able to remove probably the Tassadar. Uh, and then Freedom would end up banning out, oh man, what? something completely different here. They're not even going to let the Diablo, at least the Hover here. This is such an important moment for both of these teams. Team Freedom has made it to Game 5 versus Tempo Storm, and now Gale Force Esports, two teams that at the beginning of the league were thought of to be up at the top, especially Tempo Storm. And people had questions about where Gale Force Esports would be bringing in Equinox, but they proved their worth last weekend. And meanwhile, Gale Force Esports, every series matters for them in showing their new strength, right? So again, going to, to uh, game number five here, there's a lot on the line for both of the teams already. And for Freedom being as young as they are and having, you know, that outstanding performance versus Tempo Storm and not being able to do this to Gale Force Esports, I mean, if they pull out the win over GFE, that is a huge feat for Momentous. them. Momentous. Yeah. So now Kerrigan's up. Oh, yeah. They, but so is Rad. Wow. That, that I wouldn't have expected. Uh, so then now it's got to be the transition into the Kerrigan. Uh, but Diablo won't be obviously something they can look towards. So I, I would probably move into uh, Kerrigan Zarya or yeah. a Kerrigan Vala. I wonder if maybe it's that Gale Force Esports know that Freedom's Ragnaros is excellent, but they don't know about Freedom's Kerrigan. So they're taking away the known risk versus an unknown one. But I don't know, man. That's that's a hard choice to make. It is. It's uh, it's uh, going to be a tough one here. Uh... <laughs> I, I would have removed, I would have taken Kerrigan all day. They go with the ETC, okay. There's no way this Kerrigan makes it all the way through this, right? We've not, I get it in other parts of the world, but not so much in NA. Just because the style of, you know, uh, heroes that are prioritized, Kerrigan still can thrive with. Uh, not being nearly as melee focused as some of the other regions uh, where she struggles a little bit more. So... I haven't seen Freedom Player. Do you just, you just... Don't you just pick Kerrigan even still with Ragnaros? They both control the shrines pretty well in one combo. So if you're a smash is a dead, pick a hero on your opponent's side of the map. Like it just. Plus Rag can split soak. Yeah. And Extremely while Kerrigan, well, has, while shrine Kerrigan control, has shrine control, you can have the shrine control with the Zul. Like, hello? Are we missing something here? I feel I'm missing something. There's no way. Maybe the scare is Tass isn't up, but they could still get Zarya. Even then, it's not like you need that for her. Sure. You know, I mean, it's it's not a must-have. You just got to make sure that she's not the only threat for the team. Zarya Gul'dan, my goodness. Are they, is she going to make it through the second man phase? I don't understand Kerrigan anymore, so let's just take a minute to find out. If anybody's going to ban it, I'm guessing it's going to be GFE. Well, GFE can solo Zarya. But I don't know at this point how that comp exactly would work out for them. But they do sometimes solo Zarya. Meanwhile, Freedom still have that option and good setup 
and follow up with it too. I don't know. Like I said, this is very uh, just, you know, hard for me, I guess, to understand the rotations that have ma happened at least so far um, up here with the lack of Kerrigan presence. Uh, the ETC Mount Furion is a very traditional without Kerrigan um, as a thing to be played, I guess. Ragnaros, obviously very valued. The Zardy Gul Dan so far. Heal Force has a very well-rounded composition. The ban is Ariel. So afraid of Gul Dan, Ariel with Zarya. Not surprising that trio to be able to remove. So does it happen here or do they just let it through? I think it's more acceptable for Gale Force to let it through, but I was very surprised they didn't end up picking it up for the rotation. Especially with members like Michael Udall and uh, Equinox even, on the I team. Even I think Fan has even played mm -hmm. it in the past. Like uh, they have very, you know, yeah, Kerrigan focused players, ones that made a name for themselves on that type of hero and on that one specifically for both those. So what else type of ban? Uh, maybe a Tychus if Gale Force well, wants I, another it'd be warrior. Vala, I think, right? You just remove Vala because the control she can have over the shrine. Not Artanis, I can tell you that much. I would have let that one right on through. Oh, this is so strange. Okay. So the Artanis removal is going to be locked in. Do they let it go through again? Gilly, I don't understand this video game. <laughs> this is a very strange draft. Both teams seem to be trying to walk a fine line between exploiting their opponent's weaknesses while making sure that they're still accentuating their strengths, picking things that they absolutely need, which is why we see like Gale Force taking away Rag, but still making sure they have Zarya. Freedom responding to a Diablo ban by getting ETC. They have Malfurion too, so... It's it's tough when you get down to this game number five. You have to have adaptation. You have to have an understanding at based on where the last time. games have gone. Thrall and Tychus. Kerrigan is still through. Why the Thrall? Out of all the melees in the game to be able to pick up, Thrall is the least effective when it comes to Shrine Control. Uh, he does help when it comes to the 1v1 into the Ragnaros, but the problem is, is Ragnaros just out wave clear, so he doesn't really care um, about that. Again, it's the kill potential versus, you know, skirmishing versus wave clear. Ragnaros is actually a rare beauty in the fact that he can do a little bit of both, but in the end, the wave clear will really set him ahead. Doesn't complement the map objective. Uh, all right, so then into the Gul'dan as well, a little bit of self-sustain. The Tychus makes a bit more sense, but the Thrall seems stand out to me, and I can't help but feel like I want Freedom, their last pick to be something very synergistic with Thrall. Um, no matter what that may be. Meanwhile, for Gale Force. Rhaegar is one. Yeah, what's the next one, though? Is it the Vala? Is it the Falstaff? I think it's going to be another Fall Warrior. Set. The, the D. Okay. This is uh, a very interesting step. So it's uh, a little bit of the Zarya solo warrior with the Medivh. Uh, that we've seen in the past right onto this map, but then... They're making an unkillable comp. Yeah. I... Oh, man. If I'm Freedom right now, I'm looking for the... All right, that wasn't it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess an Azebo. So they're trying to match the sustained overall long DPS that is drawn from the Zarya Gould and composition. Uh, I got to ask, who, who won, in your opinion, out of whatever you just witnessed? Uh, also, like, you can't say you hate on it just because of the Nazebo skin. We both know <laughs> that is that is a problem, but you can't decide. It's just because his face is so <laughs> much of the problem. I think I have a problem because he's always, he's got his hand normally <laughs> shaking that jar. And so then he's, like, sitting there in your face with that, like, weird thing. And he looks like, he's, I don't know, just No, you hate it because it. it has j dread well, in it's, the it's name. It's right and, yeah, it's just, it's uh, no good, so. I think. It'll be Gale Force. I'm pretty confident in the same, just purely on the lack of like power plays. It seems like we saw uh, coming out from Freedom there, but it's hard to I tell. Got, it got real weird, real fast. That like you thought I was jumping down the rabbit hole with that last one. That was pew, right down. At least we have you here, not threatening to pull your hair out. Yeah, I'm just at this one. I just <laughs> jaw dropped. Like I don't even have words. The last one, I was like, I get it. I don't like it. Uh, this is a little bit weird. This one is just, who knows?
I think it could be Gale Force, or it, to me it seems Gale Force, but I would not be surprised if Team Freedom has something figured out about Sunder this. Sunder Earthquake. What are you taking? Sunderstruck! You got a Sunder. I think you have to into the Medivh, into the Zarya. You need Burst. You need to be able to engage and uh, confirm the kills. Long sustaining fights that went into the long run, especially into the Rhaegar. A Ragnaros, a lot of self sustain. You know, you open up with a Sunder, split the Seas, confirm a kill, and then you might have a shot when it comes to controlling the Shrines here. Yeah, I think it'll come down to where Medivh is at when that hits. Yes, obviously he should be a main focus. He'll probably mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, up in the air doing his thing. But as long as they initiate as a unit, you know, uh, and a little bit more patiently, like, you don't have to just instantly open up. You can dance around for a while, self-sustain. Uh, but eventually there's, somebody's got to be vulnerable, and that's when I would like to see that execution. All right, let's see if Team Freedom can pull it off or if Gale Force Esports have what it takes to close out this series. Game number five on Infernal Shrines starts now. I, what else? We At least it's a, okay, the one thing that, that could have gotten weirder is at least, you know, no echoed corruption at level one, and then I would have been like, I really don't understand what's happening here. The fell flame build. Yeah, I was just like, whoop. Uh, all right, so with Nazebo moving into Spoder build, uh, everybody else is keeping things pretty traditional. Uh, and then, yeah, again, the echo corruption coming out for Cool damn. Particle, or excuse me, the grenade start out here for Zarya. Can go a couple of different routes, but it's it's uh, pretty common on her to go that direction. As a solo warrior, sometimes you see adjustments, but on this map specifically, uh, typically you uh, spec into grenades. We'll be hearing more grenades later on, depending on how that goes. I'm watching the Zebo this game. I want to know why that, after seeing everything that came out from Gale Force, that was the final choice for Team Freedom, what they believe is what is needed to kill the unkillable comp. And already you see Force of Will goes down. It allows Gale Force Esports to put a lot of damage onto Zagreb, who has to walk away. My eyes are definitely on Mike. Uh, uh, obviously, Medivh has a little, I mean, as I would put it, just absolute untapped potential as a hero uh, that the world is yet to be able to figure it out. I think ADRD and Team Expert from the HTC Europe is a step in the right direction. Uh, but, you know, it's not a hero I, uh, I would consider a Mike Udall hero. Yeah. Um, and it's also just very uncommon in North America, so I'm setting my eyes towards him. Mike was quite an outlier when you looked at statistics from opening week two, though. He had great statistics for his team. He had the highest KDA of all of GFE, um, highest kill participation, lowest time dead. So he had a great opening week, but this series hasn't been, I think, as telling of his skill. The Vikings had some issues. His Muradin had some issues, too. So again, it kind of comes down to, it seems, which heroes these players are on. Yeah, it is a, it's a weird scenario to be in, you know, when, like, the comfortability and how much does that detract from the overall, you know, objective composition. And for the most part, it seems to be pretty detrimental to GFB when they aren't on their comfortable heroes. Things do get a little bit weird a little bit fast. Uh, and uh, so, again, it's going to be, you know, is Mike going to be able to recover here? First Shrine phase, now going to spawn, try and control. Probably, I'm going to say, is going to be in favor of the freedom in just long overall fights if Nazebo gets enough poke. But uh, when it comes to the clear, it's going to be Gale Force with the Gul'dan having the Zarya, having the Ragnaros. So uh, it's up to just raw poke. And with Nazebo not scaling very hard early on, I don't see them winning these early ones. Uh, very quickly. 18 to 10, Gale Force Esports with a slight advantage in getting level 4. Of course, the Team Freedom is right behind. Has gotten Hex Crawler to help a little bit with uh, the self sustain of Nazebo, who is off the side flanking, throwing out many spiders and toads and other things that he can. A 20 to 25, so it's a very close shrine fight so far. Yeah, and so a lot of it, again, the clear exists on one side, whereas the, you know, the kill potential onto the other, and there's an attempt at confirming it. Nazmus going in with a Q a little bit out of position. 35 have been picked up for GFE. They're going to be able to pick up the Punisher, and again, it's just Gale Force has the clear. They have Ragnaros, Zarya, uh, and Gul'dan. They get rid of those skeletal defenders far faster than anybody on the side of Freedom, but what Freedom has is, you know, they can uh, confirm those pickoffs, and if Nazebo picks up his game a little bit here as the game goes on, Things, uh, things can get spooky, I guess, uh, is how I'll put it there, uh, with his spiders. Punisher cleaned up fairly quickly. No uh, four, at least, initially taken down, although there was a portal. 
um, if Gale Force wanted to dive in a bit more, but Gale Force was way more concerned with having a split pressure and focus. Even though they don't have all the globals that they've had in other games, it's still one of their better traits that they do have is a constant of split pushing in the early game for Gale Force. So sending out members to all of those, even picking up some, some mercenary camps too to start making sure that they get enough of an early game lead that later on they can mo rotate more as a group, look for picks, um, and be able to just turn the map loose. Yeah, and uh, having the Ragnaros is really going to enable that. You know, there is no global for Gale Force, but just that raw wave clear and what he can provide later on with the poor decision making maybe uh, towards freedom is exactly the place how we know Gale Force to succeed at very well. Uh, so yeah, the pressure here they have on the bottom, they've got Ragnaros soaking on the top, is going to be able to get those transitions, and the lack of wave clear for Team Freedom is uh, showing quite heavily here on the bottom half. There's Portal and Force of Will to help Zarya get out of danger. Looking at some of the questing talents that were picked up, Widowmakers is almost done already, which is a nice win for Nazebo. I think it just about finished. Sulfur's Hungers is almost there too, and Echo Corruption is about halfway done. Yeah, Echo Corruption completing that fast is actually very, very good here uh, for Gale Force Esports, so they're going to be successful. Uh, but then, yeah, the Nazebo ramp, it's its getting there. It's starting up a little bit. Uh, the fact that uh, he's now three specs here uh, into the spiders and heading that level seven, having the opportunity to create two additional spiders if he hits somebody with his jar. Is that what it is? Yeah. A flask, a jar? A flask of spiders. No, like, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a jar of spiders. Warp Spiders. A Master's Touch is still the pickup for Medivh at 7, so that's the big quest to watch out for now for Gale Force Esports. Michael Udall cannot die while he's trying to get those stacks, or else it, uh, it becomes infinitely harder to get those stacks the later the game goes. Alright, so this is a tough moment for Freedom. They have to go in, they have to be uh, lethal, and they also have to be able to return the skull to the defenders all before 10. Uh, or the threat to 10 is going to be real. And sitting 13 skeletal defenders behind, that is not a pretty start. The power side attempt, good Medivh shield. Uh, the portal's used. Equinox is going to zone right on out. Fan's going to drop as well as Dainsky took a lot of damage. GFE is going to back out, tap, look to hard engage. And Freedom, if they mess this up, this is a terrible spot to be in. They are behind a level, so they need this to buy themselves some time. Here come the members of Gale Force. Zombie Wall catches Equinox. And it sets his personal barrier down, too. They have to use Force of Will to keep Equinox tanky up in the front line. Yeah, he does eat a lot of damage there from Dainsky, though. And 26 to 23, Skeletal Defenders the engage. There's the portal. There's the Medivh shield. Fan is ripping through Collusion right now. Uh, but again, the teams are going to be dancing around. So, uh, Team Freedom is slowly realizing that uh, if they do not go, that this is not going to be working out. And they end up failing. Uh, they kind of go soak the side lanes. And Gale Force Esports has the opportunity to move up to a keep front wall at this point, maybe even more if they make a, you know, very clever Medivh portal play here with the Punisher. Yeah, this is a problem, the fact that there's no front wall in front of this fort. In fact, whoever baits the Punisher right now needs to be somebody who can get away or they just give up the fort completely. And that is the choice of Team Freedom. They need to move back behind the wall. Nazebo soaking bottom, ETC is soaking mid, trying to get Freedom in. there, heroic abilities, but there's still a level before Gale Force Esports. We even have to worry about Freedom's if heroics. If I'm Gale Force, I portal all in right now. Just instant portal. You have 10. They can't stop you. Oh, that makes me so disappointed. They, what, what, like, your opponents aren't going to be able to do anything. Look to be able to pick up the kills. Look to make something happen here. Um, other than that, the punish is going to be cleared up relatively quickly. At least focus the sidewall. Uh, so, yes, Gale Force has very much a heavy control of this game. Uh, maybe not as smooth as it could have made it. Uh, but 10 still nowhere to be found here for Freedom. Leyline Seal, Horrify, Ancestral Healing, Explosion Zones, that's the one that was used there. Zugrug power slides away, gets hit by a Horrify, but it's not in a position to push him toward his team. So now all of Gale Force Esports use the portal to run away. Insomnia almost has heroic abilities, looking like maybe he wants to run after Dismount and get a Sundering to follow. Here he comes in. Is that what the choice will be? Nope, he gets Earthquake. Already? Then, I mean, having the Earthquake, it's going to be tough. Uh, uh, to see how this plays out. In the long run, if the, you know everything is going pretty for them into the team fight, I just feel like Gul'dan and Ragnaros are really going to be able to outscale that, that you know, over. I get the idea with the Earthquake, you know, you throw down Gargantuan, Odin, uh, Twilight Dream, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, this, it might be enough with the Garg and Odin uh, to convert team fights. Either way, Heroic Choice not available for ATC yet. He hasn't selected it. He goes with the stage dive here. 
Uh, and they're going to try and force this as the Leyline Seals drop. Leyline hits four people, but it's mainly just to bail, equal, uh, bail all of Gale Force Esports out of jail. So that'll be done for 70 seconds. Let's look at Mike's stacks. He is only about a quarter way through Master's Touch. So that does keep him maybe wanting to get engaged as much. Insomnia has to use Earthquake to get out. Sulfurous Smash comes down, nearly takes out Insomnia. Wow. Portal hits. Michael Udall is in the back line, too. Yeah, being able to survive there was huge. Now you go on a bad spot using Force Will on a self portaling out. He now mounts up a pro in. Needs some help here. There's going to be the Zarya shield. He drops a Horrify. Good cleanse coming up from Collusion. Insomnia is on the chase fan. Getting body blocked down below. Another shield keeps it up. The fan ends up going down here. Now Zugrug sets his eyes on the crow and Dainsky confirms the kill into Odin. That did cost them the thrall. The shield drops and Equinox end up going down here too. Three for one in favor of Team Freedom. And they might be able to get Udall if he throws the grenade. He will. Oh, I thought his oh, grenade was up. Oh, that would have taken out his stacks too. That would have been a huge win. But still, a three for one is great for Team Freedom as a shrine has started and it's in a place where a fort has already been taken down to half health so this is team freedom's place to come back yeah and that fight was such a beautiful start to it for team freedom and the fact that so many resources were committed he threw down the earthquake the stage dive is the follow-up and then the pulsation uh there to be able to get him enough healing with his q uh to send him back up to half health it was just it was such a beautiful bait maybe you know a little bit too far out there but in the end it works out for him as he's going to be able to pick up this punisher with his team knocking down uh bottom four and they'll be able to pick up the 13 so we'll see if they get anything else out of this shaman camp though was captured and ragnaros is clearing on top for gale force esports so this is going to force after the fort drops a decision making that could be if, if team freedom pushes farther and they aren't successful in getting a kill uh that they could lose a little bit too much in the top lane another reason why team freedom knew that they could engage there even though it was thrall who was caught threw down an uh, earthquake it caught a lot of members they had stage dive behind but leyline seal wasn't there mike had to use it earlier on to defend his team and knowing that that wasn't there to stop whatever momentum Team Freedom had. Freedom with that understanding that now was their go time. Yeah, and I forgot that they have the same time. So ETC is going to go get the clear. They transition over to the mid fort, try to get that pressure out as best they can. But you see Udall is sitting there. He has the opportunity to portal his team in. Will he go that way? Well, it's going to fall. And oh, again, a little bit uh, more of a passive play and transitions here for GFE. Whoa, superstition for Nazebo. He gets 50 spell armor, so he's gonna take a lot less damage from Gul'dan. I guess Ragnaros, uh, Sulfur Smash too, those kinds of things, but he does take 30% more damage from basic attack. It's such a wicked icon. The it is awesome. It's just like this evil acid flame doll thing full of bell. I don't know, either way, it's pretty dope. Uh, and so, yeah, the Superstition coming into play is going to help with the Mediv, you know, aggressive positioning into the Gul'dan as well. Uh, I like the idea behind it, but... I thought he'd want Ice Block there. I, I, I actually like the... Just because more, a majority of the damage is going to be Spell, right? Like, he coming out from their block, opponents. Right? Uh, so, I actually don't know post-rework every 13 if he still has the opportunity. I think he does. Uh, still have the opportunity to go into the ice ball. Yeah, I know all the talents there are uh, ones that keep him safe. Guardian hurts the other one, but don't see a ton of Nazebos. Uh, he is two for two, though, so far in his win rate. Let's. You know, so we got to say that. Maybe Team Freedom can make that three for three. Just throw up the. That's all, that's all you can say that. Oh. Anytime the Nazebo uh, does well. Either way, here, 14 to 14 structure advantage is going to be pretty much non existent. Both teams are pretty close. Scouted out here, Udall. Uh, ETC is on bottom, but again, he has the stage dive. And they're going to, you know, wait it out. Both teams seem very focused on not fighting until there's a shrine. Uh, makes a little sense in this for Gul'dan and Zebo because both of them, you know, love to hang out and poke. Uh, but the rest of the comps, I can't help but feel like uh, really, you know, it would be in the best interest here for Freedom to really just try and initiate. Uh, Questing talents are all done except Masters at Touch. Still halfway for my Q doll. Heading into 16 for both the teams. Shrine will be activating in just a few seconds. And just in time for that, Team Freedom take out Rhaegar. Hawk base falling down there is going to lead to a lot of control. Probably a full Shrine uh, converted here. Blue Dan's going to be clearing up the Shaman camp. So this is going to be a moment here for Freedom. They luckily have not had to really, you know, contest around these long, you know, fights. The reason the Ghoul Dam was picked is exactly this, the Shrine fight. And with those couple of pickups here, uh, they've been in a fine position. Nazebo's going to even siege on his own a little bit to be able to help this Punisher. 
And we'll see what they make happen here. The Punisher with the Ford up typically is only going to get, like, you know, keep front walls. They might even rotate top and get rid of that Ford instead. Uh, but I'm looking for a play because so far these comps have been very passive. They have been, but it's understandable too. It is game number five. It's scary for both of the teams. You gotta start seeing some of that aggression. You gotta win the team fights to eventually win the game. Team Freedom takes out the fort very quickly. Punisher is going to start to look to jump in. Fan uses Molten Fort to defend here. So nice call from Freedom to just turn around and go push somewhere else that he can't defend and buy time for his team. Yeah, a cooldown burn there by Fan, a little bit uncharacteristic, especially because nobody showed. They broke Fog of War right. and then they instantly used it. So um, a bit of panic choice there, but nobody was able to confirm anything on this top fort for, or excuse me, Team Freedom. Gale Force may want to pursue, pursue? No, they're going to just be totally all right here with backing out, you know, painting the map their team's color. Surprisingly defensive and patient is this game so far on Inferno Shrines. Does it seem like it's too passive from Freedom? Yeah. Okay. From both sides, even Gale Force, it just seems like, you know, risk of fight, poke around a little bit here and there. Even if you only go, like, trade for trade, but just the lack of, you know, even portal attempts there. You have a Medivh on your team. Gul'dan is hit Echo Corruption. What are you waiting for, really, other than uh, maybe fear of Zarya not getting value out of the chokehold fight? But, uh, you know, with Expulsion Zone, that's the only real major problem I guess I kind of see with this. Gale Force are going to apply some pressure to mid, so maybe they're trying to make one of those situations happen. Something around a chokehold, maybe. Try to expulsion zone someone out from from the safety of the team, but Insomnia is staying right up in front so that if that happens, he can drop the Earthquake, whether for safety or to help his team. ETC split soaking in top. Gale Force Esports see that. He can continue to throw down grenades for days on this fort, trying to bring it down. Yeah, and the grenades are going to be able to wheedle it down here over time. Let's see if the stage dive is going to be used. Nope, and that's going to be the fort converted. Top keep is still almost dead uh, for Gale Force Esports. Uh, the last shrine we had was spawned on mid, correct? All right, well, where our next one is going to be moving here towards bottom. Uh, this is huge, the well being available for Team Freedom in this fight. If they're ever going to take a fight, this is the one. Uh, just the opportunity to back out and tap. They know Gale Force doesn't have that luxury. And we'll see how it works out. Nazebo's hit his spike. Same with Gul Dan. You know, it's really yeah. the war of the mages is about to unfold. Same with Thrall, right? He's got Giant Killer and uh, uh, increased damage. Tempest Fury now at 16. So here's the Shrine spawn. Gale Force already having the advantage uh, positionally. Nazmus ends up throwing out the spells. See how it goes through Equinox, giving him that, all that energy. Uh, being able to kill him out quite well. Udall is going to be able to get up there, and Zugrug ends up getting the isolation. The Twilight Dream as well. Leyline Seal is going to be busted out there, but Equinox barely is going to get the portal to survive, but it costs Akaface's life. Akaface is down. I freaked out so much that I hit my microphone. He's down. Zugrug's teach dives in, goes for another power slide too. Oh, huge Sulfurous Smash and Horrify go down at the same time. But still, Gul'dan has been taken out. Team Freedom. Killed two members of Gale Force Esports, two for nothing. Nazma zoning everyone from Gale Force away with the zombie wall long enough to pick up the shrine. Yeah, that is a huge moment here for Team Freedom. Uh, being able to get this now with two people dead. Uh, they do have Molten Core off of cooldown uh, by now, but 19 is going to be picked up. They're going to be threatening the 19 and a half 20 range. That should allow them enough breathing room to really uh, open up the map a bit more and possibly feign for at least a lethal, if not totally dictate the next couple of minutes of uh, this game and the movement of Gale Force Esports as they're already got the keep wall down. There's going to be the Molten Core, no interrupt available. That's uh, going to hit, that's going to stun a lot of people. But still, there's several seconds before all the members of Gale Force Esports are up. And Team Freedom just burn through Ragnaros, Molten Core, so that they can take out this keep. The Punisher has been pulled to the mid expulsion zone. They've got to commit. It's Freedom in. It's a 20 if they do, they have to commit. Oh, not close enough, or excuse me, not quite close enough. But uh, either way, that positioning, like if they back out, there's so many situations where a team, you know, Failure to commit is just going to ensure that you die, but if you get rid of it, your opponent's not going to be able to take that fight, even on the same talents here. Very well done. Freedom gets the first keep of the game. Earth and shields. Are you, oh, you're just throwing your hands out. I thought you were trying to give me a high five or something. Uh. Like, yeah, this is, this game's crazy. I'm checking out what we have. Uh, bolts for ETC. Uh, 
bolt for Malfurion too, so we can look for a bolt dream. Big red button. Earth and Shields is the interesting one for me to see for Thrall, but that can help us with everyone in Earthquake uh, to give shields and try to let uh, Freedom sustain just as much as Gale Force would like to be doing with this heavy shield comp that they have. And finally, Vile Infection. Those stacks are already done. So now Voodoo Ritual is applying to heroes, doing a lot more damage. So the poison damage uh, will be just as much from Team Freedom now as we're looking at Gul'dan trying to dish out the poison damage too. Yeah, now it's at the point where if you didn't feel like fear the Voodoo, you definitely do now. Uh, Nazebo uh, hits like a truck. He's managed to get that ramp and is in the lead. Uh, so let's see what they're going to be able to make happen with this 20 uh, advantage. I would actually like to see less threatening on a keep and just get rid of that top four uh, because the next Punisher, it's going to be important to make sure that no matter where it is, you start threatening multiple keeps or at least uh, the end of the game. Uh, whereas this is a small moment where a big Leyline Seal Molten Core area can really turn the game. Uh, but either way, they're going to stay and posture around this for a bit longer. They are getting it relatively low as it sits directly below 50% HP. Zeebo's throwing out the spells. Superstition aiding, just ripping through uh, Mike Udall there, even putting the shield on himself. Reabsorption is not enough. Yeah, those spiders, especially when they hit one target, that's where you get the extra two. Yeah. Can do a lot with his vile infection as well. Freedom Steel, the Shaman, kind of running out of the, what they can take away from Gale Force through this window that Gale Force doesn't have Storm Talents. Gale Force will have them. They have weathered the storm. Now for this next shrine, this shrine is in the top. That is where Team Freedom's keep is lowest. Um, this probably is going to be it. Yeah, they, whoever, whoever wins this, it is probably going to be it. Uh, if not, is at least going to be so close over that you know anything really could happen. I, I'm scared here for Gale Force. It hasn't worked out uh, so far when it comes to the fights. Now that you know we have. Nazebo really hitting his massive power spike. Look at the damage he's doing to Equinox right there. The pressure as well. Good shield coming out. Earthquake's going to be dropped, Gilly. Earthquake. Zagreb went in two. Equinox is in trouble. He's taken out. Zarya is down. So Fury Smash hits nobody. Fan is in a terrible spot. Body blocks from Insomnia and Zagreb. Look how healthy Team Freedom are. All Fan can do is submerge until the portal comes out. Leyline Seal and Horrify still trying to help the rest of Gale Force Esports. Fan comes in with the Molten Core, gets the stun. Nazmus maybe it's overextended a little bit too much. They're going to be able to blow the damage down. Look how they're here, setting up, too. It. They're looking to set up so that they can get a kill once he comes out of Molten Core. Ancestral Healing keeps Fan alive for now. The rest of Team Freedom trying to win the game off of this one push. They're starting to finally take some damage. And in fact, Insomni nearly goes down, but instead takes down Ragnaros. Yeah, and now this is going to allow them to be able to back out. They have 60 seconds before Ragnaros is going to be alive. So they capture this, probably get the 39 cap, and then look to, you know, split some pressure, back out maybe even. Uh, the most important thing here is that they apply pressure, and Gale Force is panicking. There's already three catapults moving to the core on bottom, too. I don't know if they can risk this four versus five. ETC's on top. He still has stage dive. Gale Force is... ETC's just going to come back, really make sure that none of Team Freedom goes down. And Equinox will clear out the, the catapults now that he is resurrected, but still 27 seconds until Ragnaros. Team Freedom, 60 seconds now until they have stage dive back, wow. but the rest of their heroic abilities will be available for this push. Yeah, uh, they will, and they had the option to, you know, wait it out a little bit. Uh, focus onto the sidewall. It's going to be crucial here for them to be able to open up, uh, you know, the end of the game here, uh, follow up onto the keep, because I'm pretty confident it doesn't have the side, or it has the full front wall. This keep has been untouched because the fort just dropped. So yeah, so the keep now is going to be in a position to where you can actually, you have to focus the sidewall. So that's going to be the first focus here for them. Heroic choices. Heroics are not even available. They only have... So Fear Smash, mm -hmm. uh, Ancestral Healing is not going to be available, and I think Leyland Seal just came off cooldown? Uh, yes, and Horrify. All right. So there, it is possible for Gale Force to defend here. It is. It is not 100% going to be over, but one wrong step, and it could be. And they have struggled in these later game fights. Yes. Versus the damage, even... Versus the Nazebo. Yeah, right? Like, like even though the... They have Force of Will, they have Zarya shielding, and Zarya did spec into getting another shield. She got pain as temporary. The whittling constantly between the grenades here and there from Tychus, the Nazebo poisons too, chain lightnings is just enough that once 
somebody gets caught out, they're yeah. able to get through the whatever shielding is available to take them down. And all this is really only possible purely on the fact, actually, we have the game ready. We're going to be getting right into it here. Game number five, Punisher achieved here for Team Freedom, and they're looking towards the keep. Uh, but yeah, no, it's only available because uh, we kept seeing people of Gale Force get picked right as the shrine spawned. So suddenly, you know, that Gul'dan, what he's going to be successful at and be able to make happen, really never got his moment. And then Nazebo suddenly outscaled him very, very quickly. Here comes Ragnaros into all the baiting is happening, and all of Gale Force are just trying to get rid of the Punisher as fast as possible. But Odin's been used. The keep is down. Here come Team Freedom from oh, the down. side. Okay, there's the stomp. Van ha ha uh, had to have cleanse used to be able to get him out of there. They're looking for the fight. Team Freedom's jumping in. Insomnia gets hit by Sulfura Smash. Big red button being used. The nukes ripping through the members of Gale Force Esports. Health bars decimated. Punisher, Punisher jumps in onto Crow and looking at Crow and punching him. The Ghoul Dan Twilight Dream drops too. Team Freedom are just heading oh. for this core. 80. It's at 65%. It's just so low. Everybody's trying they to survive the kite around 30%, 20. This is going to be 12, 10. And Gale Force Esports, in fact, is going to fall to Team Freedom, 3 to 2. Wow. <laughs> These guys, Gale Force Esports was the most convincing performance out of week number one. Team Freedom had a iffy week number one, came in here on Friday, was very, very impressive with their performance against Temple Storm, and then, in fact, is able to beat Gale Force Esports in a best of five, taking both of them to game five. And only one of these members has ever placed top eight in North America. Zogrog was in one, one uh, random top eight, but yeah, otherwise brand new. Dainsky knew, Nazmus knew, they were drafted from Hero League. Insomnia has been trying for a long time during his time on two arc to be able to show his fortitude now too. These guys come together, they work hard, they improve every single series, and now they just took out Gale Force Esports in a very back and forth Best of five yeah. with Nazebo. They keep the Nazebo win rate alive. <laughs> they keep the Nazebo win rate alive. And it was sticking to the gun, sticking to, you know, the comfort picks. They never kind of veered away from that. And we even saw, I don't know if it was overconfidence or just, you know, panic on the side of compositions coming out from Gale Force Esports. But they were trying to do their own thing. You know, Mikey Dahl playing Vikings, playing Medivh of all things. And it cost them. Freedom is not a team to laugh at here at HCC. No, not at all. And we saw like their their interviews, people questioned, are they going to be able to actually take down some of the top teams? They show a lot of confidence in uh, themselves. Oh yeah. But now we see why they should have confidence in themselves. They're finally hitting their stride in the HGC, proving that there are several teams that could be considered at the top of NA. Yeah, we do not have a clear ranking uh, like we definitely felt like we had before we entered this uh, HGC North America here in 2017. I just... I don't have words at this point. I'm just amazed at what they've been able to achieve. I know who's going to have some words, and that <laughs> yeah. is Insomnia. Hey, buddy, congratulations. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you. Oh, man, uh, take us through your team's mindset going from your series versus Superstars last weekend to almost taking out Tempo Storm and then now being able to beat Gale Force Esports. Okay, so basically um, we kind of take every you know, um, mistake as a stepping stone to improve on. And we really like to thoroughly address our mistakes. That's why I really feel like we're a great growing team and we definitely all constructive criticism on each other. And I feel like we're just like every mistake, we're just jumping over it and we're coming back stronger. And then that's, I feel like why we're playing so well right now. Yeah, it's a great mindset to have. Do you have questions, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, with that being said, that you're playing so well, like, right now, do you think that it is only uphill, like, from here, that you guys are just constantly going to be rise and be maybe even the best of North America? Or do you feel like this is just a really good weekend for you guys and maybe, you know, tone it back a bit? What is your guys' you know, thought process and feeling <laughs> on where you stand according to your potential? So I feel like we are one of the most underrated teams in North America. I feel like we had a really good way into HGC and now we're having the opportunity to show like how great we really are and everyone that thinks that we're nobody is definitely underestimating us so I feel like this is not the end of Team Freedom. I think it's just the start. Yeah, it seems <laughs> that way. You guys are we're playing feeling good. Good you should be that was a, a momentous win for you guys and now next weekend you're going to be going up against Naventic who I think you guys know each other a little bit more so maybe walk us through how you're feeling about that matchup now at this point. 
So Noventic is probably our biggest scrim partner. They're also probably our best friends in the league. So it's kind of, it's going to be a cool rivalry next weekend. Um, we definitely have a lot of strats on each other. So I think it's definitely going to be a series to look out for. Awesome. Well, congrats again. Uh, any shout outs <laughs> before we go? Uh, I would like to thank uh, Deed, Goofy, and Indie Bear, our meme lord for Team Freedom. I'd like to thank my mom and dad, my girlfriend, and my boys, man. We're playing really well, and I'm really proud of everyone. So, And our fans, thank you guys so much, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, we did see a lot of tweets cheering you guys on. Congrats again, Insomnia. Good luck next week. He just opened up thank yous <laughs> to a meme lord. Oh, man. Any support <laughs> you can get, you know? You need a good laugh, and the meme lord's got it. Insomnia is awesome. I he can't is. wait to hear more from him. But guys, that concludes our first series of the day. We have more heroes for you soon. We'll see you after this break. Everything that I do in my life is working towards getting on to the big stage of video gaming. I don't want to get second place this year. Like, I'm, I'm going for first. I won't be happy unless we win. My name is Andrew Rodriguez, and I go to University of Texas at Arlington. Daniel Lee and I go to University of Connecticut. My name is David Young, and I go to school at University of Tennessee, Knoxville. My name is Michael Udall, and I go to ASU. Heroes of the Dorm is an amateur tournament focused on college teams, playing not for prize money, but for tuition. This is my first year competing in Heroes of the Dorm. Gaming at first was just a hobby, but now it's kind of evolved into part of my life. I grew up in Mesa, Arizona. Gaming was definitely frowned upon. I would think, gee, what a waste of time. You guys ought to be studying algebra or anything worthwhile. My parents used to hate when I played, but now they're like, this is so cool, you're going to Seattle for playing a video game. Hello and welcome to the Heroes of the Dorm Heroic Four. Here